Hey everybody, welcome to the Guild Wars 2 panel at PAX East. Hello! Yeah. All right. It's great to see we have such a well-attended event. Thank you all for waiting in line and for putting your butts in the seats so we can talk about Guild Wars 2. Really excited to talk to you guys today. We have brought a whole bunch of people out from Seattle, uh, myself included. I'm your musical host, David Campbell. I'm a web and marketing guy. You don't need to ask me anything. The bathrooms are to the left out there. That's about all I know. But these are the guys who know all about Guild Wars 2. So without any further ado, let's introduce our panel. Game designer Colin Johansson, he swings a sword, he swings it again. <laughs> Boston's own game designer, John Peters. Our community manager, Regina Buena Obra. And let's see if I get the title right. Senior VP of Global Business, Randy Price. We have RPG legend, Jeff Grubb, the lore master. <laughs> and she's an environmentalist and an environmental artist, Tears of Bauer. <laughs> Finally, my partner in crime, he's got one fist of iron, the other is steel, brand manager, Brian Porter. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're gonna do today. Today, since there are probably some people in here who are not intimately familiar with Guild Wars 2 like we are, we're going to run our MMO Manifesto video just to kind of give you a kind of a primer um, on what Guild Wars 2 is all about. Um, we'll also uh, do a little overview. Colin and John will talk about what makes Guild Wars 2 so awesome. Um, and then we'll take a look at um, the latest skill videos for our most recently revealed profession, the Thief. Stealth and surprise. Then we're going to open it up. You may notice in the center of our hall, we have a microphone. We're going to open up to questions and answers. So without any further ado, let's get started with our MMO manifesto video. We founded ArenaNet to innovate, so Guild Wars 2 is our opportunity to question everything, to make a game that defies existing conventions. If you love MMOs, you'll want to check out Guild Wars 2, and if you hate MMOs, you'll really want to check out Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 takes everything you love about Guild Wars 1 and puts it into a persistent world. It's got more active combat, a fully branching, personalized storyline, a new event system to get people playing together, and still no monthly fees. The look of Guild Wars 2 is uh, stylized. We're going for a painterly, illustrated aesthetic. Everything in our world feels handcrafted and artisanal. We treat our environments as if they are characters themselves. When you look at the art in our game, you say, wow, that's visually stunning. I've never seen anything like that before. And then when you play the combat in our game, you say, wow, that's incredible. I've never seen anything like that. In most games, you go out and you have really fun tasks occasionally that you get to do. And the rest of the game is this boring grind to get to the fun stuff. I swung a sword. I swung a sword again. Hey, I swung it again. That's great. We just don't want players to grind in Guild Wars 2. No one enjoys that. No one finds it fun. We want to change the way that people view combat. As a structure, the MMO has lost the ability to make the player feel like a hero. Everybody around you is doing the same thing you're doing. The boss you just killed respawns 10 minutes later. It doesn't care that I'm there. You'll get quest text that tells you, I'm being attacked by these horrible things. And it's not actually happening. In the game world, these horrible centaurs are standing around in a field, and you get a quest step that says, go kill 10 centaurs. We don't think that's OK. You see what's happening. You see centaurs running to the trading post, knocking the walls down, burning and killing the merchants. We do not want to build the same MMO everyone else is building. And in Guild Wars 2, it's your world. It's your story. You affect things around you in a very permanent way cause and effect. A single decision made by a player cascades out in a chain of events. You're meeting new people whom you will then see again. You're rescuing a village that will stay rescued, who then remember you. The most important thing in any game should be the player. We have built a game for them.
Pretty awesome stuff. The manifesto videos are lying in the sand, and uh, it sort of distinguishes what makes Guild Wars 2 so special. But to talk a little bit more about kind of the key characteristics of what distinguishes Guild Wars 2, Colin and John will take it away, and then we'll take a look at that, those Thief videos. All right, so to, to start out, I just want to clarify three points that we get asked an awful lot about Guild Wars 2. Um, the first question is, Guild Wars, uh, is Guild Wars 2 a fully persistent true MMO? Uh, the answer is yes. Guild Wars 1 was a mostly instance game. Uh, we hesitated to call it a full MMO. Guild Wars 2 is a true MMO. It is a giant persistent world where you'll be playing together with hundreds of other players at the same time in the same map. Um, second question is, is there jumping in Guild Wars 2? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And the third question is, is there a monthly fee for Guild Wars 2? And the answer is absolutely not. <laughs> Buy the game once, you can play it forever. So uh, that, that is a, a quick overview of the three points that we want to make sure everybody understands about Guild Wars 2. Um, and the next thing we're going to talk about is innovation in Guild Wars 2. Uh, so at the start of that video, our founder, Michael Bryan, mentions that we founded ArenaNet to innovate. Uh, and Guild Wars 2 is attempting to innovate the MMO genre in three key areas. Uh, personal story, dynamic events, and combat. Uh, so I'm going to start first by talking about personal story. Uh, so personal story is our attempt to take the RPG elements that you would find in a great single player RPG and put that into an MMO. Uh, the idea here is when you create a brand new character, you're actually going to fill out a biography where you answer questions about who your character is. And these are things like if you're a human, you're going to say, I came from the city streets, I came from the commoner class, I came from the gentry class. And this will give you a unique storyline that you can go on that's different than other players. Along the storyline, you make decisions that branches the story and gives you completely unique and different content. So even if one person decides to be from the gentry class, they may have a completely different story than the one that you get to experience because of the branching that occurs as you play through the storyline. Uh, the things that happen in the storyline are permanent. They change your character forever, and we reflect those things in your home instance, which is an area in your character's home city that you can go back to, and you can see things that have changed based on the decisions you've made throughout the game. Um, you may have a friend who's in dire need, and you can choose to go help them, or you can let them be for the greater good, and the choice that you make will be reflected when you go back to your home instance. If you saved your friend, they'll be there, um, and they'll have completely different dialogue based on the things you've done in the game. Uh, if you let them fall and they die, other things will happen in the game world. <laughs> Secure your laptop and protect your data with failsafe. <laughs> so this, this is the first core area for us is innovation, uh, is personal story. We want your character to have a personality. In a traditional MMO, if somebody asks you, who is your character, you answer, well, I'm a ranger with a bow who kills things. I, I don't really know. Um, and you're going to be able to answer that question in Guild Wars 2. Say who your character is, and you're going to have a journal that you can go, and it records all the things that you've done in the game throughout your personal story. And you can go back and read this journal and see exactly who your character is and tell people that. Um, so that's number one. The second thing we're trying to do is we're trying to take the concept of traditional quests in an MMO and throw them out the window. Uh, we have replaced those entirely with dynamic events in Guild Wars 2. So the concept here is when you're out exploring in the world, there are dynamic events that are going on all over, all over the place around you. Uh, and people can naturally join in on these dynamic events. You don't have to walk up to a guy, talk to him, read six paragraphs of text and figure out what's going on. Go off, do something, come back and get a reward. Instead in Guild Wars 2, you are naturally drawn into this content. Uh, an example of this would be there's an army of centaurs that's marching through, uh, going to attack a city. You're going to see this army marching through. You're going to see people from the city running out, finding your character in the game, telling you, I need your help, an army is attacking us, and they'll point at the city and tell you where to go. You're going to see centaur catapults flinging boulders through the air in the distance to draw you towards this content. You're going to see buildings on fire. You're going to see and hear all of this so you don't ever have to read about it and you become naturally immersed and drawn into this content. Um, now these dynamic events don't start, uh, stop there. This is just the start of a dynamic event chain. So the centaurs are going to come and they're going to attack a town. And if you fail to defend that town, they're going to take it over and a new event begins where they hold the town and the players need to take it back. If the town is held, the merchants from that town are killed off, the villagers are dead, some of them scatter to try to get help, but this place is lost to the world so players can no longer go there until they liberate it. 
Then it doesn't stop there. The events continue to branch out. So the centaurs are going to go to a nearby forest and they're going to start chopping down trees and trying to build siege weapons and take those siege weapons back to reinforce the town they just took. You have another event where you can stop them from doing this. If you fail to do so, the town becomes more, more defended by the centaurs. Um, there's going to be escort events where you can escort troops and escort supplies up to the front lines to try to help against the attacks to take the city back. Uh, if you don't drive the centaurs out of the city fast enough, new events kick off where the centaurs move out and they start to attack other towns nearby and conquering those. And all of this goes as part of a giant dynamic event chain that spreads out across the map. The idea behind this is every time you explore in a map in Guild Wars 2, you're never going to know what's going on because there, be com there can be completely different dynamic events running at any given time. So you have a unique experience each day you play through the map, and you may see something completely different with a brand new character than somebody else saw as they played through the game. Um, now there's some technology that we needed to add to support dynamic events to make all of this work properly. One of the things that we did is events dynamically scale based on the number of players that are there actively participating in the event. So for example, in the, uh, the example where the centaurs are attacking the town, the number of centaurs attacking continue to scale up and more centaurs come if more players come to defend the town. So there's enough stuff for everybody to do who's participating in this event. Uh, if you're doing a kill boss style event where there's a giant boss in the world, as you know, 100 players run in and start participating in it, the boss will continue to grow in power to make it fun for all 100 people and they start gaining new abilities they can use to make the battle more interesting as more people show up. This is all part of the core concept of Guild Wars 2, where we're trying to build a community between our players. And the dynamic events is one of the things that's at the forefront of that. Uh, one of the base rules of our game is if I attack a creature and somebody else comes up and helps kill that creature, we both get uh, experience for it, we both can get loot for it. There's no kill stealing in Guild Wars 2. Um, there's no stopping somebody else from getting a creature. The idea is that you're part of a community and you're working together and these dynamic events allow for that. So everybody teamed up in an event uh, is participating. Is everybody else hearing that? It's kind yeah. of ringing. Um, <laughs> so everybody else that's participating in an event is building a sense of community together. Things that you're doing and killing together, everybody's getting rewarded for it. The events become more difficult as more players are around. So as you see other players in a map, you're excited about it. You, you're really excited to see other players come up and join you. Instead of in a traditional MMO, where if you see other players, you're upset because they're going to come over, they're going to steal your loot, they might steal your kills to prevent you from completing a quest. Um, so dynamic events is the number two area that we're trying to innovate. The third area we're focusing on innovation is combat. And I'm going to let John talk to you a little bit about that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't hear anything. Sorry, Colin. <laughs> uh, yeah, so combat. Uh, Colin talked about that social thing. and. While we talk a lot about our combat being really active too, I think another really, really important thing that we're trying to do with the combat is make it social as well. And I don't know about everyone else, but I'm pretty tired of looking for groups. Um, I'm pretty tired of shooting, project homing projectiles, shooting at me, not being able to dodge out of the way, you know, and all that stuff. Um, and I think I'm pretty tired of clicking on red bars, watching red bars go up and down, and pressing buttons and pressing one 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 two one one two one one three one 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 two uh, it's getting pretty old and so uh, we think it's kind of time for a change for that and that that's what the combat is all about uh, you know there are, there are different things that players need out of combat and you know one thing that you want is players to be able to interact with each other to have a role in combat and to matter and for a long time that role has meant I'm either a healer, I'm a tank, or I'm a DPS, and that's all I can do. Uh, in fact, in Guild Wars 2, everyone can do all those things, and we expect you to do all of them within a single fight sometimes, and certainly as you're going through the game. And that is not the role that you play. The role that you play is how you do it, and not what you do. Uh, the distinction is, look at our professions, the Guardian. You know, he's all about controlling area. He's about laying things down, making people like, you know, move out of places, controlling the ground, you know, taking over the areas of the battlefield. The thief, on the other hand, is the exact opposite of that. He's making you turn around, look, he's moving in, moving out. And it's, it's a much more interesting thing to deal with uh, making a profession choice and who you bring based on their play style and based on who you want to play with and not who you have to play with. You know, uh, we don't want to make sure that people are playing with their friends. If you guys, if you have five friends and you guys all want to play warriors, then you should all be able to play warriors. It shouldn't really matter. You know, it doesn't matter if you have five warriors or five guardians. It's the game is about playing with people who you want to play with. So, the same thing with that. Uh, we talk a lot about the dodging and the active combat. You know, uh, it's one of those subtle things that you know actually 
even at work, you know, we haven't really figured out how it all works yet, the whole shooting a projectile and guys getting in the way. You don't, you don't really realize what that means until you've played the game for a few months and you start thinking about, oh, I'm fighting these two creatures and I'm shooting that, oh, I'm actually not shooting the guy in the back. This guy in front of me is in my way. These bullets are hitting him. I have to move out of the way. I have to actually do something to, fight, to do what I want to do in combat. And, uh, <laughs> It, it takes a while. I mean, you've, you've all seen the YouTube videos. It takes a while for people to learn that. They're kind of stuck in their ways and standing around shooting. And, you know, when, once you start to get used to the game, you realize just how different all that stuff is. And, I mean, I think we have the, the thief videos here that we can kind of give you a nice idea of what that means. You know, this stuff is all in-game. This isn't fake. It's not some sort of rendered thing. You know, this is what the game plays like, especially once you know what you're doing. So. playing a Sura Thief after watching that. It's pretty <laughs> awesome, huh? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We know you guys have a lot of questions, so as you can see in the center here, we have a microphone for your speaking pleasure. Sir, you got your hand raised. Why don't you start the party off right here? Question, I just want to say thank you. <laughs> because, for the longest time, I've been trying to find an MMO that's actually good. I played Guild Wars 1, and I did like that because it was free, and it was a low, low level cap of 20, but there was a lot to do. But this is exactly what I've been waiting for, and I'm definitely pre-ordering this, and I just want to say thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you very much. In the skill videos, the tune does some uh, vocalizations, emotes, the I am so stunning, the, that's the way it's done. How do you call those up? Is that an emote command or is it automatic? So there are uh, about 400 lines for every player and they're all in combat. It's all voiced and uh, it, there's a system that determines when to play them. It's not as often as we show in the videos. I know like, people like to complain about that. Uh, 
We also, um, you can't turn them off. I think we're going to be able to turn them down for how often they are, kind of a slider. But uh, the idea is that there's just some, uh, they just bring a lot of character to your character. So something to add to that real quick too. Um, we talked a little bit about how Guild Wars 2 doesn't have traditional quests and there's no giant blocks of text you need to read. Um, we've recorded over 60 feature films worth of dialogue in Guild Wars 2. Uh, so wherever you go, you can hear characters talking and you can become immersed in the world through the spoken dialogue. Um, I just recently got done with the Rift beta and one thing I noticed that was kind of a really big hindrance for me was they, their big events that you guys talk about you having in your game as well um, were very pertinent and were a lot of fun and were an important point to the game. But the moment you moved out of a separate area, you didn't know they existed anymore. Do you have something in place to kind of keep everyone globally aware of these events as they're going on? Or what do you, what do you think about that? All right. So, <laughs> none of the, there, there's nothing else in the game. Uh, that persistent world, it is dynamic events. There are over a thousand of them in the game. And, uh, that's the whole point of the game, is to bring people together for these things. And I think that's an important distinction, probably the biggest one that's easy to overlook, is that when you're playing the game, you're not worried about what, you know, your task of 40 quests that you have to kill a bunch of dudes is. Like, what you're doing is you're just out in the world exploring and bumping into these things. And so there's never, oh, I moved out of the area where this is. They're not, like, random and they happen somewhere where you aren't, right? They're very, very scripted and very planned. and. The whole thing is planned to like create this experience. I don't know, Colin. All right, thank you. Yes, I've got, <laughs> I've got something to add there too. As you participate in these events, they basically, they, you can leave the area. You don't have to finish every event. You can basically fight the cutthroat pirates for a while and then you know, get called away by something, something else. Your participation is still there. So when the event resolves, you still get rewarded. You don't have to go cash in with anybody. You don't have to hang around and wait for the event to finish in order to get a reward. Uh, as far as dynamic events go, uh, I realize this is kind of an old example, but something like Tabula Rasa, you, you know, liberate the city, okay, now I can go ahead and get these quests. I went and did this quest, came back 20 minutes later, the city was taken over again, I had to go redo it all over again in order to turn it in. I realize that the turning quest element isn't in there, but when the center is attacked, is that going to be something that happens, you know, every 20 minutes? <laughs> So uh, the, the events in the game do run on cycles. They are part of event chains. So I talked about that centaur example earlier where they attack the city and all these events chain out from there. Um, as the event chains and you completely liberate the city and complete the chain, the chain will restart at some point. Um, unfortunately, we, we can't make unlimited content that only runs one time. Uh, we would need about 10,000 game designers to make that happen. But uh, we, we do try to make it so that they don't run constantly. Um, you, some of you guys may have played our demo uh, down on the show floor. We've got the event times uh, tweaked up running faster than they normally will, just to make sure that there's enough stuff for you guys to, to really get a, a taste of what all the events are like. Um, normally, they would run a little slower than that. The idea is that you shouldn't see the same event all the time, uh, but as you're exploring through a map, you may see the, the same event happen occasionally. Uh, most importantly, we want it to feel like if you're exploring through the world and going to different places, you're going to see different things going on. The, wheel, the world's going to feel like it's alive, and it's going to feel like if you play through a map twice, you might be able to see completely unique content each time you're playing through, uh, through our dynamic event system. <laughs>